If you fall behind on your payments for your auto loan, you risk having your vehicle repossessed or taken back by the lender, which can happen even without a court order. What's worse is this doesn't just leave you without a car, it will also negatively impact your credit for years to come, which makes it even harder to qualify for another car or a loan or credit cards or a mortgage. But the good news is you are not powerless. You have options. And in this episode, I'm going to reveal my three secrets to deleting repos. So stick around. My name is Daniel Rosen and welcome to Credit Repair Business Secrets. Okay, let's get into this. What exactly is a repossession? It's when an auto dealer takes possession of your vehicle, sometimes without warning you in advance or without even having permission from the court. Vehicle repossession laws, they vary by state. Most vehicle purchase contracts include details about how and when your auto lender can repossess your vehicle. Repossession, it usually occurs after you fall behind on your payments. Now, depending on your contract, your lender may be able to start the repossession process after just the very first missed payment. Yeah, that's right. That means there are a lot of families out there who need a credit hero right now. Now, there are two major types of repossessions. They are voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary is when you give your car back to the lender, usually because you can't afford to make the monthly payments. However, when people talk about repossession, they're usually talking about involuntary repossession. And this is when the lender comes to take back the car. And if you've ever tried to help a client that had a repo on their credit report, you probably found out that they are generally pretty stubborn to get rid of. Repos are a little different from almost any other type of item on a credit report because of the little nuances that lie within the contract of the auto loans. Okay, but as a credit hero, you have options. There are three expert tactics that can really help you to permanently remove them. The first tactic is a factual dispute tactic that you can use to try to remove a repossession. It typically works fairly easily, but it's a bit advanced and it only applies to loans that have gap insurance and that have been sold at auction after the repossession and then the balance is sold to a third party. And again, it must meet those conditions or it won't work. Now, most vehicles financed from dealerships, they have gap insurance. And if you have gap insurance for the life of the vehicle, a prorated portion of the vehicle is covered if and only if the vehicle is considered a loss. A repossession is a loss. So when this happens, the refund is sent to the financing company. Now, the financing company receives this gap payment long after the account has been sold to the third party debt collection agency and it never updates the true balance of the loan on your credit report. And this means the balance is inaccurate. It is factually inaccurate, and that is the key to removing the repo using this strategy. Now, are you scratching your head and asking, so how do I do it? Well, don't worry. I'm going to break it down into two steps. Now, keep in mind, timing is critical. So you need to complete step number one and step number two in the very same day. Okay, first, step one, 
you demand validation with a certified mail return receipt requested on the account with the third party debt collection agency. Now, chances are they will respond with the wrong balance because GAP paid the financing company and the financing company did not report the payment to the third party debt collector. And then step two that you want to do in the same day, you want to contact your GAP company and request a refund for the loss of the vehicle. They will immediately tell you that a payment has already been made to the financing company and you need to ask for proof and they will send you a receipt for the payment that they made to the financing company. And next, you assemble a large envelope with the sent certified mail return receipt with several documents to send to the credit bureaus and be sure to include the following. You want to include a copy of the receipt from the GAP company. You also want to include a letter to the three bureaus explaining the balance reported was not accurate. And next, you want to include a copy of the validation demand that you sent to the third party debt collection agency. Next, you want to include a copy of the signed return receipt from your debt validation letter. And finally, you want to include the response received from the third party debt collection agency that's showing the wrong balance. And guess what? This usually results in a deletion. And if not, you should file a complaint with the CFPB and then resend everything that you had previously sent along with a copy of the CFPB complaint and you want to send that to the bureaus and or the third party debt collection agency and demand removal. Now, the second strategy I like to call a credit sales discrepancy. Okay, so if the repo that you are trying to remove, if it doesn't fit the criteria for the tactic that I just went over, here is another factual dispute tactic that is often successful simply because of a minor detail in the terminology used to indicate the type of account. See, here's what happens. Auto dealerships are set up in one of two ways. Number one, an installment loan where the dealer lends you money and then you pay the dealer in installments until the loan is paid in full. Or number two, a credit sale. This means the dealer sold the loan to a lender. Now, most dealers prefer credit sales because they get paid immediately as opposed to collecting interest over a long period of time with loans. So if you or your client signed your documents at a dealership, there is about an 80% chance that this was a credit sale and not an installment loan. So take a good look at your credit report. And if it says loan, and it usually does, you can factually dispute the repossession based solely on that specific factual error. For example, you might write the account you are reporting is identified as an installment loan, which is factually incorrect. The true account type for this account is a credit sale agreement. I have the right to an accurate credit file and discrepancies like this are unacceptable. Please remove this account from my credit file immediately. Now, remember, if you are confident about the fact that it is being misreported, don't give up if they verify it. Okay. You can always follow up with a creditor or a bureau warning letter, and you can file complaints and follow up again. And even then, if they are unwilling to correct your report, 
you always have the option of working with an FCRA attorney who may be able to not only permanently remove it, but possibly settle and put cash into your client's pocket. Now, the third and final expert strategy to remove repossessions, I jokingly call the how the heck was I late paying after you took the car strategy. So if you or your client's vehicle has ever been repossessed, typically the vehicle is sold at auction for a fraction of what was owed, often leaving a deficiency balance. Now, once that happens, how in the world can the original creditor still report late payments? In short, they shouldn't, but they often do, and that is the key to identifying a factual error, and ultimately, it's the key to its removal. The reporting of late payments after a repossession occurs, that's an error. And when this happens, simply dispute that error with pinpoint accuracy, pointing out that the vehicle was repossessed and defaulting on payments at this point is inaccurate. And for example, you might write the account that you are reporting is identified as a repossession, yet you continue to report late payments. Since the vehicle is no longer in my possession, it would be impossible for me to default on the payments after the fact. I have the right to an accurate credit file and discrepancies like this are unacceptable. So please immediately remove this account and its entirety from my credit file. Now, another potential discrepancy to look for and factually dispute is a monthly payment account appearing after the vehicle has been repossessed. A monthly payment should not exist after a repossession has occurred. So, as you can see, I just gave you three secrets to deleting repos. But again, they are very, very specific. If the repo that you're targeting does not fit into the criteria that I just outlined in these tactics, you can always try basic disputing methods, but if you really want to zero in on the specifics, go ahead and give these strategies a try. And if you want to get certified in disputing and launch your very own credit repair business over just a couple weeks, I want to invite you to join our Credit Hero Challenge. It is an amazing program that has helped tons of credit heroes to get their first paying clients, to get certified in disputing, and to gain confidence in knowing that they are launching their credit repair business on a solid foundation that allows them to grow and scale fast. We are starting another challenge very soon, so you got to sign up now before the doors close and sign up right now at CreditHeroChallenge.com. And if you're finding value in the things that I'm sharing on this podcast, click below to subscribe. And if you're feeling kind, rate me and give me a review because these things really matter. This is a new podcast and I can use all the help I can get. And I will see you on the next episode. And until then, be a credit hero and keep changing lives. Want more credit repair business secrets? Then get a copy of my book, The Ultimate Guide to Starting a Credit Repair Business. Get it free at creditrepaircloud.com slash free book. Inside this book, you'll find my top 35 secrets to removing items from credit reports and turning that into an amazing business that helps people, changes lives, and makes you a great living in the process. Get it free at creditrepaircloud.com slash free book.